Hi everyone. Hi. Um, it is currently, what time is it? 7.26. 7.26 a.m. and my roommate and I decided to go to Stoff's to get coffee this morning um, before I go into shadow at the congenital heart disease clinic later. So I'll take you guys with me there. I don't think I'll be able to really show anything inside the clinic, but I can show at least like going into the hospital and everything and give you guys my impressions. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna drop off my roommate back at our apartment. She's gonna go to Chick-fil-A and then- Some free food. Yep, and then I'm gonna <laughs> head to the hospital. So I'll be back with you guys soon. Peace, like, and subscribe. <laughs> sitting in the cafeteria of the hospital, which is called Bistro. Um, and I grabbed a little snack to eat while I finished drinking my coffee um, and before I go into clinic. So right now I might just, I <laughs> actually might just read up a little bit on congenital heart disease, um, just to go over some of my notes from the last block since we just finished the cardiopulmonary block, um, just so that I'm kind of a little bit more aware of what's going on um, today in the clinic. I already know that I'm going to be seeing some bicuspid aortic valve patients, I think. That's what the doctor said to me in the email. But besides that, I don't really know what to expect. So I just want to do a little bit of um, prep for that. Lectures today do start at 8 o'clock, but luckily everything's recorded, so I'll probably just take a look at those later um, in the day today. Alright, hey guys, I'm back from clinic. Oh, I can take my mask off now. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I'll definitely talk to you guys about it in a little bit. I'm just driving back to my apartment now and it's snowing outside which is really sad because it was like 70 degrees like, a couple, like literally two days ago but anyway um yeah I, it's like 12 13 now so I was actually in clinic for like four hours even though I thought I was only going to be there for a couple hours um I think originally the doctor said that she might send me back a little early just because she thought she was going to get really busy and she wouldn't have time to teach me, but she ended up having a couple of no-show patients, um, so it wasn't as hectic. I think her afternoon might be a little bit more hectic, but I was only scheduled for this morning anyway. Alright guys, I'm literally just going to sit in my car. I just got back to my apartment. I'm just going to sit in my car and talk to you guys for a little bit before I go in. Um, but yeah, like one of the first patient that I saw was a bicuspid, bicuspid aortic valve. Um, in a 56 year old man and it was pretty cool because um, you know the clinical presentation of someone who's born with a bicuspid aortic valve or like an aortic valve that only has two leaflets instead of three is that like they might have some severe symptoms like by the time they're 10 um, or it could just not present as anything much until they're in their 50s so he had what my doctor said um, was almost like an almost perfect bicuspid valve because he's 56 and he's just now um, having these symptoms which is why he got an echocardiogram with his primary care physician and now um, came into the adult congenital heart disease clinic um, but yeah so that was really cool he was He's a paint, he was like a painter and all these things. I don't want to reveal too much, obviously, but it was really cool because I got to listen to his heart and he had a, and hear a murmur. Um, and with the last block being during COVID and everything, we didn't really get a lot of experience um, being able to listen to people or dummies, I guess, with murmurs. So that was cool. Um, and yeah, it was very clear and the doctor helped, helped like walked me through all of that stuff. And then the second patient I was supposed to see was um, a Tetralogy of Fallot, uh, which I obviously don't expect you guys to know what that is, but another one of the diseases that we got tested on for the last block. Um, so that was really cool and um, I got to read an EKG and all that. Oh, one cool thing that happened with the first patient that I mentioned was that I... Um, was looking over the EKG and then after the patient had already left and I asked the doctor why the patient had sinus bradycardia and we ended up actually talking about that for a while um, and she was like oh that's like a good catch because um, it could have something to do with his 
heart's ability to conduct um, electricity consistently through the heart, um, to, just to simplify things a little bit. Um, so I was very happy with myself for catching that and asking that question. But yeah, so go back to the second patient. The second patient ended up not showing, which was sad because I was um, kind of excited to see that like in real life. But either way, third patient I saw was um, a, uh, oh, it was like a Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which um, basically it's, it's not necessarily, there's no genetic marker for it. Um, doesn't necessarily run in families, but it just causes like um inappropriate or like lack of collagen production um you can get like fibromyalgia from it um, and it increases your risk for certain heart conditions so this patient came in and was having um sinus tachycardia so like a heart rate above 100 almost all the time even at rest or sleeping it was still pretty high um so i ended up just talking to him a little bit about everything that's going on and prescribed a beta blocker as well as well as lifestyle changes so once again i just felt like this was a really cool experience for me because i actually understood what was going on i knew the drugs that um the doctor was referring to they were painful to memorize during the block but um i feel like this made everything worth it um but i also really enjoyed the cardiology portion of cardiopulm um which is not true for everyone um yeah, and then the last couple of patients that we saw, um, one of them was like kind of a mystery and I think the doctor decided that to hand that patient off to pulmonology to see if they could figure out anything else um, because she looked at the echocardiogram and ruled out a bunch of certain diseases. She was like, I don't think what's going on here is um, cardio per se, um, so let's try handing him off to pulmonology and see where that goes. So that was the second to last patient, and then the last patient I saw was a patient who had transposition of the great arteries, which just means which had been treated. She's like 35 now, but she had gotten treated for that when she was like seven days old, um, and it's pretty much where the artery that comes off of your right heart and your left side, the right side of your heart and the left side of your heart are switched. So then when you're seven days old or pretty much right after you're born, they switch them back. Um, but because there's that switch surgery, you have to be obviously um, just monitored for the rest of your life. So we saw her um, and she was really cool, really nice. Um, and it was just really awesome being there with the patients and being able to listen to their murmurs. She had a really great, um, like grade five out of six murmur, which just means loud murmur that's easy to hear. Um, so yeah, that was, it was very educational for me. I'm really glad that I did it. Um, I'm totally sorry if that was way too much information, but I feel like you guys would be curious to know. Um, so yeah, for the rest of today, I'm just going to go in, I'm going to make some lunch and then do a bunch of work until dinner time. So I've got to catch up on today's lectures that started at 8 a.m. Um, so I'm going to try to do that and review some lectures from earlier this week. And then I'm going to be getting dinner with a few friends. So I'll bring you guys along for that. I don't know what we're eating yet, uh, but you'll see. And then I think we're going to study together after that for the TBL, which is tomorrow. So our TBLs are team-based learning. And it's pretty much a series of quizzes where you take the first one alone, the second one in a group, and third one in a group. Um, so they're really nice. They're more um, discussion-based and supposed to get you um studying like every week for the new material because it's like based off of five or six lectures that we've had in the past week or so so that'll be fun i'm a little behind as usual on lectures but i will get through it Welcome to my desk. I have a friend here with me. This is my roommate's cat. Her name is Clemmy, and sometimes she likes to come up here and see if I have any food on the counter. Oh, she's off now. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, we are studying for the TBL now. Um, and <laughs> well, Lucy forgot her laptop. Actually, she forgot her whole backpack. So <laughs> I thought we were just getting Barrios. I didn't. I didn't. I forgot about the studying part. I, mean, I was just excited <laughs> for Barrios happy hour. Yeah. Medical student. He never stopped studying. Yeah. You're right. You're right. And then so now she's just using both of our iPads to do work. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Hi. <laughs> this is Jenny and Cindy, <laughs> and they're also here working on it. Um, we've already accumulated like an eight-page document for this TBL, so now we're just gonna go through that. Hey guys, it is now 9, 10 p.m. and um Lucy, Jenny, and Cindy just left to go back home. I'm going to spend the rest of the night um, just continuing to finish reviewing for the TBL tomorrow. Um, we made like a group Google Doc to kind of make sure we hit all of the objectives for it, but I'm still going to try and go through as many of the lectures as I can tonight um, before my TBL at 10 a.m. Um, so half of us have the TBL at 10, half of us have it at 8. Um, so I got lucky this time that mine's a little bit later. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed coming along with me today. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring. Um, and yeah, feel free to send me any questions anytime.